Hey guys, so uh, welcome to this week's video and uh, in this week we're gonna take the uh, the mesh that we wrapped to match our uh, ZBrush sculpt or model and we have our uh, our uh, texturing XYZ multi-channel textures applied uh, on it and now we're gonna be uh, I'm gonna show you how to uh, transfer or project these textures from the plane uh, that we wrapped on the model into our actual model with our actual UVs. So uh, I tried first to do it in Mari, but I think it's because it's uh, the only link between my wrapped mesh and my ZBrush model is uh, world space. So it was like a little bit buggy and it didn't work at the end. So, uh, because they don't share topology and they don't share uh, UVs. So I thought that I'd just stick with the X-Normal thing that uh, that was already mentioned in the tutorial from the Texturing XYZ page. And it's fairly simple and uh, X-Normal is a free software. So I will quickly show you how I do that. And then afterwards, after we, uh, we do the projection, we're going to take it... Uh, in Mari with our model and correct everything that, that was a little bit messed up uh, in the projection and the wrapping process and at the same time we're gonna finish painting uh, the color maps fixing the displacement maps uh, on our model in Mari and this way we will have everything fixed on our main model so uh, let's see how we can do this so First of all, let's start with the X normal projection thing. So what we need to have is that, if you remember guys, we had our plane from Texturing XYZ, and on this plane, we assigned the texture maps uh, that's coming from Texturing XYZ, and we had our base mesh, which is gonna be like our sculpt from ZBrush or our model. And what we need to do now is that we need to have this plane, the projected one, the one that we, uh, uh, the wrapped one, sorry, the one that we wrapped to our model, we need to have our base mesh, our actual model with the correct UVs, the one that we're going to use, and we need to have the textures that we are going to project. So first of all, you go to high definition meshes, and as you can see, I already have it imported. So what, what you need to do is just go here and then add meshes, and then it will like show you where you need to add your mesh and as you can see here I have the two meshes in this folder and I also have my texture here so I have here my base mesh and I have the wrapped plane so in the high you need to add the plane the one that that you wrapped on your model so that's what I did and then I uh, I add here in the base textures to bake here if you base textures to pick I added this and we're gonna you're gonna be transferring everything so you will need to transfer the albedo you will need to transfer your uh, your uh, displacement maps and you will need to transfer also the utility in case you you need it so uh, that's what I did here in your case when you open the software it's gonna be just empty and then you're gonna have to import it like that like add meshes and then here base textures to make and then you go to the low definition meshes and in the low definition meshes i imported here my uh my base mesh my model the one that i'm gonna be working with that has the correct uvs and then after that you go to baking options and in baking options what you need to do is just like uh, go here, assign where you want it, where you want to have it, and then write the name. So I think here I have written the name uh, baked color because I'm gonna use the uh, I'm gonna bake first the color map. And the most important thing to do is that to in case it, it just just because you need to have like all the, the resolution uh, to be there. It doesn't matter if you're gonna make it like 2k or 4k later just bake it on 8k and uh, take advantage of like tr uh, transferring all the details and then you can later like adjust it if you want to make it smaller 
uh, or just not make it 4K if you're gonna be making UDIMs. Uh, I don't know if XNormal supports UDIMs, but even if it doesn't, just uh, project it on 8K and then later uh, project them in in uh, in Mari or transfer the channels in Mari uh, from one that has only one UDIM to another model that has the same topology but has different UVs and it has like several UDIMs and this will be very easy to do in Mari. There is also another video in Texturing XYZ um, tutorials that shows you how to do that. It's very very simple. And then the other thing is the edge padding. Uh, go up to 20 and this is the padding that's gonna be like on the on the edge of your textures. Uh, and what you need to do is that you need to bake base textures. You need to take this one Remove anything else because we're not gonna use it. We're not gonna use you. You will usually find normal map, so just remove normal map, and then bake uh, base textures. And that's it. You will just like click generate maps. <coughs> and I don't know why I get these errors, but it's working fine afterwards. And then it will take some time, and then it will bake your maps. So. I'm gonna pause here and then resume once the, the maps are baked and I will show you the results. So as you can see here, it's still baking the passes. This is gonna be very quick. I think it will finish now. And as you can see now, my color map is baked on uh, my model, my base mesh with the correct UVs. And yeah, you see now it's like adding the padding. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Very, very simple, guys. You, you will do that for the color map, for the displacement, and uh, and for the uh, for the utility. And then what I will do now is that I will take this uh, to Mari, show you how it looks like, and then I already recorded the process of uh, painting this in Mari, uh, like continue painting the missing parts and then cleaning all the stuff that I will not need in my color map and uh, like fixing the, the the weird areas and I will show you this like in a in a uh, like a video that's that's uh, uh, two times the speed two times the speed so that it wouldn't be like boring and I will comment over it and tell you what exactly I'm doing so uh, let's first go to Mari and see how this looks like in Mari so as you can see here, I am in Murray, and here is my uh, model. I made this layer called XNormal, and I'm gonna import. So import, import into layer, and as you can see here, I have it in my folder. So baked color based textures and when you import it, it's going to be srgb so it's going to be automatic srgb and then i will import all patches and it'll take some time and i have my color map on 8k too so that's how i like to work i like to work on one udim 8k so that's it as you can see now i have my model with my UVs, the UVs that I'm using, and you can see like now I have uh, everything projected exactly as it meant to be on it. So what we're gonna do next is that we're gonna clean areas like the eyelashes. I don't need the, the brows because I'm gonna make uh, grooming for this. Uh, fixing things like on the nose, like if you can, if I, if I go to flat, you will see like this uh, missed, messed up areas like on the lips here. So uh, let's go next to uh, uh, the recorded video that I recorded before and I will start commentating on it and tell you exactly what I'm doing and I will show you like how I fix the color map and the uh, displacement uh, maps. So let's let's do that. So here we are in Murray, and as I told you guys, this was pre-recorded. So I'm gonna import the layer, and of course I don't, I don't work that fast. So that was, uh, it's double the speed, 
so imported my color map <clears throat> and I think I, I yeah I was just doing this to show you guys that I still have my 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 reference next to me uh, I'm not gonna go totally over uh, matching the the colors exactly for now but at least I have it next to me to know what I need to clean for now so it's always handy to have uh, your reference next to you and what I will do is that I will add the uh, the texture map uh, that I was using the one from XYZ and I'm gonna use this one as uh, the the texture that I'm gonna be projecting from so I named the 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 base texture XYZ which has my my uh, raw projection without any fixes and then I made a new layer over it to start fixing so first thing the nose so the nose the like the scale of the details on the nose is huge now uh, that's because it was wrapping uh, my textures all over the nose not just the front part so what I'm doing now is that I'm reprojecting only the front part to maintain the correct scale of the pores on the on the nose I will do the same also in the in displacement so yeah as you can see uh, before and after And I think I will continue like even going a little bit higher. And then next on list is cleaning the eyelashes. So I choose an area that's close to the eyes, a little bit lower than the eyelashes. And I start uh, projecting from it. I think I didn't like the hard brush so I chose the soft brush and I will continue working with the soft brush and as you can see cleaning and I, I don't care to be perfect for now because I'm gonna revisit all of that later again I will also be like painting with, with a brush and not everything is going to be projecting that's why I didn't care that much for now yeah and this is like the corners trying to clean the corners So I'm gonna just start projecting because I know that at the end I will show part of her neck. So I wanted to. Uh, now I'm selecting the cloud uh, brush to project faster, <coughs> and I will be coloring her neck area. And I think someone asked this question in the uh, on the previous video how you can uh, finish painting uh, the, the model after the projection and that's basically how we do it I try to keep using only the, the same texture because I'm sure that it's different if I use uh, another texture with other uh, lighting or coloring uh, or colors uh, like skin color so I try to make it work with what I have with a little bit of projecting from here and there a little bit of coloring until at the end it looks okay to me and have in mind that all these color details uh, like if your colors it, like if you have some messed up areas like your color map is 95% correct that will be enough it will not show on the, in, in the shader 
the subsurface scattering takes a little bit from the from the colors. It's like it diffuses it and, and soften it a little bit. And I don't care about like all these uh, uh, blemishes in her skin because all of this is very easy to to fix at the end. You can just project from an uh, an area near the area that you have the problem or the, the the blemish in, and then you remove it. I think I will be doing something like that in this video. As you can see, I'm like selecting the corner of the jaw, trying to keep things a little bit related. So if I'm gonna be painting areas like the corner of the jaw, I try to match where her nose is, the corner of the jaw, and then I can paint this area on the neck. Doing this again here. And sometimes I just make it bigger. I don't care if it's on the neck, on the on the upper head, because I know that on the neck, uh, it will not be a focus point, and on the upper head, it's gonna be covered with groom. So that's why I don't care. Um, in her mouth, in her nose, in her ears, in her eyes, all of this, I don't care about how it looks like. It's just solid. A solid color is enough for me because it's not, it's not gonna show. Now I'm adding a cloud procedural uh, layer and as you can see you have like color A and color B and I'm choosing the these two colors. I get like a light color and a dark color from my skin, my existing skin uh, colors and then I control the size of the clouds. And quickly I have a good base that I can start painting on for the rest of the heads. So that's a nice trick that I use most of the times. And it's so much better than just using a, a basic color or like a like a, a flat color. Because that's what happens with skin is that it's always uh, mixed it's always procedural it's always noisy so i'm adding a mask with reveal all and then i'm gonna hide this is to my xyz layer if you remember guys this is the one that i got from projecting from uh, x normal so i'm adding a mask with a with an option of reveal all and then i'm gonna select a black color and then hide the areas that i don't need from the texture like for example, the uh, the hair, uh, the brows, uh, and also I think like all these artifacts that's coming from projecting like on the back of her head, you see here. I don't care about what's underneath, <laughs> it's not gonna show. And actually, I don't really care that much about the like her her head or the back of the neck because I'm sure it's gonna be covered with uh, groom and and cloth. But just in case, you know, just at least trying to make it uh, representable. And now you can see, like, I'm gonna reproject again. Uh, because I know that this area, it will show a little bit from the groom. You know, this is where the hair is not going to be that dense or thick. So that's why I'm adding uh, more skin textures to it. So you see what I'm doing here on the top of the head. I'm trying to match the scale. That's why I keep coming and going back. So yeah, I think it was small, so I made it bigger. Yeah. 
as as much as I can. Do the same on the side. And again, I don't care about the blemishes for now. This is the easiest thing to fix. So again on the other side Of course I'm gonna uh, revisit it again That's not clean at all So as you can see I keep going back to areas and fix it sometimes I don't care if it's in the same uh, exact location and it works so it's okay So I'm trying as much as I can to not show any hair. Especially like I told you guys in the areas that I know that hair uh, will not be as dense or thick. So it might show the skin underneath. And as you can see here like in the back of the head. Because first of all I know that it, I'm not going to show like the back of her head and also you know even even if it happens you know it's gonna be like it's not gonna be uh that obvious in the end i think i will not keep it maybe i don't know i don't remember yeah i will just leave it like that It's just I was using this color because I know that the back of the head is always uh, more reddish than than the front of the neck. Like the back of the neck, sorry, is always uh, more red than the front of the neck. And that's why I was adding uh, colors that's coming from an area that's that has a little bit of a reddish skin. Not the uh, yellow or white parts. And now I'm like going over it again with a soft brush it's like a mixer of both now and then i'm i'm fixing now like i'm actually duplicating my uh my cloud procedural uh layer and what i will do now is that i'm gonna pick up colors uh, let's see what I will be doing here so yeah I'm gonna pick up like a little bit of darker and more reddish colors and then play around with the size and the roughness and yeah something like that go to my XYZ projection layer and go to my mask and start removing areas that has hair so yeah guys projecting textures and fixing them and repainting them in more that really requires patience and you have to be patient just listen to some music listen to to a, a podcast while you're doing it and that's why i don't record it uh real time anymore because it took me like three videos on when we were working on walter white to record it live and now i like have it both like the color and the displacement map in one video recorded and i'm commentating over it so uh yeah just be patient while you're fixing it and the more you fix it uh, in the correct way the better results you're gonna get 
so that would be a good motivation for you I'm trying to connect the side of the neck to the back of the neck without having this weird uh, separation Yeah, it's starting to look better now. <clears throat> As you can see, I'm like going back again, fixes areas that I had problems with before. And I... It, doesn't bother me the uh, repetition that's happening on the upper forehead that's because I know that this is gonna be covered with groom and now the ears I think I will try to play around a little bit with projecting over the ears and then I will notice that that's like so difficult ears are always very difficult to project on it's crazy difficult to do that uh, on ears uh, so I always struggle a little bit in the beginning with with projecting on it and then I end up painting the areas that still missed and I use the uh, the UV uh, view a lot while I'm painting or projecting on ears because it's really difficult to project on them in, in the ortho or the 3d view Yeah, I'm struggling with it now. So it's good enough for now. Of course, I will revisit it again. But again, if you remember guys from previous video, I was really, really impressed with the uh, the ears projection uh, that's coming from the the XYZ, the new uh, multi-channel packs and the new workflow that they have. And as you can see here, I'm fixing first all this uh, hair and, and gray colors that was uh, going into the ears. So I'm going back to the mask that I have on the uh, on the texturing XYZ layer and I'm painting in black all the areas that I don't want. So as you can see it's still doing it on the ears also, on the back of the ears. So now I'm going in the ortho UV views so I can project on the uh, UV view so that it's easier. I th think I didn't notice that I was trying to project on the XYZ layer. Yeah, This happens a lot <laughs> that sometimes I would be making a mistake and I notice it only when uh, when I see the recording again. So yeah, now I notice and I go to the other layer and I keep projecting and now it's working. It's 
So the wireframe, as you can see, guys, I have two versions on like I have here, if you see in level one, this one, I have two versions. I have one version, which is, which is my base mesh, the one that you have with the wireframe here. And I have another version that's the same, uh, like the high res of this, the scalp decimated. And I decimated while keeping the UVs. And this way I can go to my objects here in this area, right click on it and then click add version and then I add the decimated version and then in my version here I select decimated and I keep working on the decimated so this way you can see all the details while you're sculpting so for example if you are working on a model uh, that has some areas on the face that has details and you need to sculpt over these details that's the best way to do it so Fix the lips. Now I will just select the darker color and and paint the nostrils. I'm doing it now in the UV view. So now I'm just painting. Now I. Uh, Click C, you can get the eyedropper and pick color, and then just paint. And then I go back again to projecting some areas, like the corners of the nostrils. So again, patience. Just patience and working in layers like I told you guys before on the Walter White uh, tutorial. Especially uh, with the old maps, with the old XYZ maps, you, you have to ha to work with a lot of layers. And uh, you have to have some patience while working on it. This one is, is amazing, it's just very, very easy to use. Just gets you like 90% of the details right out of the bat. I don't know why I was obsessed with making everything perfect in the ears. It's not gonna show that much in the end. But yeah, it's good to be trying to make everything perfect. Uh, that was a, something I was trying and it was giving me a very, very noisy results so i went back to my cloudy uh, brush and now i am just painting which is good enough for areas like inside the ears So I don't like this seam. I think I will fix it. <laughs> yeah, and then I will just paint over the area with the seam. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't like uh, the ears. So I think I will keep working on them for some time. What was surprising was, for example, the results that's coming from projecting the lips, which is also another thing that you always struggle with when you're just projecting. So that's why, you know, ears, lips, very difficult. And with this new uh, workflow, it's very, very simple to get nice results on both. 
so I'm still looking at my references so that's what I was telling you guys about how simple it is to clean these blemishes and this stuff you can either like just pick some colors and get rid of it or you can just like project from a nearby area and then project over it and this I was just painting over it so yeah and then I think in the end I would just I didn't want to bother for cleaning that much for now or like getting the likeness and now I'm doing the projection thing that I was telling you guys about is that you can just like control click on the area that you want to project from and this way you can clean it so control click clean yeah very simple and I think I didn't bother that much with the neck because I knew that I don't care about the neck for now that's not my final color map I will have to refine it more and that's basically the workflow when you're working on portraits is that you keep refining 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 I'm reprojecting the uh, lower part of uh, the chin trying to make it look nice fade it with the neck I actually ended up like fading everything back again I was not happy about how it had a lot of pores and reddish colors in an area that shouldn't be like that I didn't like the shadows here got rid of it I will add a tiny bit of uh, of chin I think go back again and fixing this time just painting yeah sometimes just a little bit of uh, regular painting wouldn't be that bad I didn't notice that my painting was really warped that was because I'm in the flat uh, in the flat uh, lighting so that I can see the shadows I can see what I'm painting exactly so I think I will discover that later yes here and I'm like wow that doesn't look good <clears throat> so I will just select clear instead of painting didn't work because I was painting on the same layer bad thing to do I should have uh, added another layer to paint on so I think I just I think I just painted on it again so I went like Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, and then I went back to where I was and then repainted over it again while having in mind what exactly I'm doing. So as you can see guys, once I go into a shaded mode, you don't see all these uh, uh, separations in the skin color. And as you can see, I was just looking at her neck and I noticed that she already has some blemishes on her neck. So uh, of course I will try to match that later, but uh, for now it means that it's okay to have that in, in the neck of uh, the model that I'm working on. I think I will be painting some... Uh, uh, eyelids wrong color it 
So I think that this color is, yeah, I was just going to say that this color is too dark for, for an eyelid color. And it's good that I went back again with a lighter color. So what I do here is smarter. I already get a lighter color. And I paint with this lighter color. Again, looking at the reference, I think I was looking uh, because of the, the brows, maybe? Oh no, the lips, so yeah. I was just trying to see if uh, the shape of her lips, like the texture of her lips, uh, matches what I have or do I need to correct it, and I think I was, I was happy with what I have for now. <clears throat> So repainting areas that I'm not happy about. And uh, like I told you guys, I think I will be, I will revisit the color map again, especially in the stage where I need to do the renders and see how her uh, skin color and like the marks on her skin look like in the render and compare it to my uh, reference and try to match it but this is later what I need now is just to get like good enough uh, without any artifacts skin color Now I'm just painting. I'm not projecting anymore. Getting rid of this hair. So I'm trying to get a good color that I can paint over with. Going back again to my UV view, it's always easier to paint on flat UVs, uh, especially when you have uh, a geometry that's a little bit complicated like, like ears. I'm trying to paint over any uh, weird artifacts that I still have and it looks decent enough for now yeah I think I, you see that's what I was telling you guys is that just having a solid color in the inner eyes inner mouth whatever you're doing just to make your uh, your textures look nice uh, yeah so you can see like now like inside the eyes and now I'm uh, painting the color of the eyelids which is kind of pinkish the cranky lab art doing the same here I pick a lighter color So yeah, getting darker color a little bit. Yeah, it looks so much better than uh, than the uh, uh, raw projection now. And all of that was done in a matter of an hour, I think. And I think the last thing that I will do is gonna be cleaning 
the uh, the eyebrows because again I'm gonna be grooming this so I don't need her eyebrows so I duplicated again my my uh, my cloud uh, procedural map add a mask hide all and then I go with a white color in the mask and I start revealing the areas that I want so I'm selecting first colors for my color A and color B for the procedural and then I will start removing the areas where there are brows I didn't like how they look a little bit gray so I think I keep dabbling with the colors for some time just try to make it not gray and I think I will end up just like painting over it with a brush but yeah this is this is like my last step uh, for the color and the color map and like I told you guys this is by no mean the final color map I will have to go back again for a little bit of refinement and especially uh, likeness texturing that's how I call it is that when you try to see things in your reference and try to match it in the textures so I will have to do that again so I ended up lowering the opacity on my uh, my cloud uh, layer and then adding a new layer and just painting on it to make it look a little bit nicer and uh, more uh, complicated more interesting <coughs> again this will not show as much especially that it's gonna be there's gonna be grooming on it and of course you know, like grooming and shadows coming from the grooming so you will not notice it that much but I'm just trying to make it as clean as possible but yeah this is the last tip and I think after that I will start uh, moving into cleaning the displacement map for the displacement map guys I think it would be cool to first take it into Photoshop because I think it's normal uh, add an alpha and then when I try to import it into Mari I couldn't because of this alpha so it's good to just go to Photoshop and delete the alpha channel that you have I think I don't know maybe it works for you the same way that it worked on the color map So yeah, that's it for the color map. Still not happy about the brows. So I ended up projecting a little bit from uh, the next skin. Yeah, that would be so much better. So I'm getting some textures from the part that's uh, above the brows, the forehead. 
and it got me nicer results something I was happier with yeah that's nice so with brows and without brows and as you can see once I add some shader you don't see uh, you see them blending well together. So yeah, now I imported again my displacement map and as you can see like if I add a select channel uh, Adjustment layer I can select my R, G, P, R or G or, or B channels and then one of them is gonna be secondary the other one tertiary and then micro so what I'm doing is that, that's another thing that I did, is that I uh, added 50% uh, gray in Photoshop to everywhere there is no uh, displacement information coming from, uh, from the projection. And this way it would make your displacement map really clean when you project it over uh, in, in, in ZBrush, for example, or on your model in, in Arnold. It will not do anything to the areas that doesn't have any displacement information it's gonna be just neutral so so you see that's what I was telling you about the copy channel and I have this layer in front of me just so that I can see more details better I don't know the, when it's purple or blue the the color that's happening when you have all the three channels at the same time it just confused me a little bit and also doesn't help me to see the scale of the pores so if i'm projecting uh it's always better to have like copy channel so i can see only on one of the channels the scale of the pores and where i am exactly in the textures just confuses me and I'm cleaning with 50% uh, gray, which in Murray it's not 50% gray. I think it would be something like 0.261, something like that. So that's why it's really good to just add this 50% gray inside Photoshop. And then uh, you can just select this color and work with it. I think it's because in, in Murray you, you are working in a linear workflow. So that's why colors are a little bit different and values yeah I'm cleaning now with my gray all the artifacts that I want to show I don't want to show in the model So once I get to so I did the same thing also guys like I just I got in my image manager I imported the the displacement uh, map that you get from the the multi-channel pack and I'm gonna be projecting over the areas that I was not happy with uh, so I was trying to to do this until I discovered that there was something wrong with the with the, with the UVs. That's because I was using I think the disseminated version. So I I just tried to do it, and then I found out that it wasn't happen. There was nothing happening in the uh, 3D model, so I knew it was just like 
happening because of the disseminated version, the UVs in the disseminated version. <coughs> Again, some of the stupid stuff that you would be doing and then you would be discovering later that there's nothing there. So now I'm cleaning the lips. So again, a little bit of patience and uh, concentrating on the areas that you want to paint over, fix, be precise. Scale is very important. Try to match the scale of uh, the maps that you're projecting to your model as you can see now I'm like fixing the lips make it complete because all of these like really white or really black colors that you have in your displacement map once you apply it to your model it's gonna make it like really carved in or like really protruding so that's why I have to have this black and white values in the right place other otherwise if you're not sure just paint it with mid value so that it doesn't have any details in them that will be better than having wrong uh, dark or white uh, dark or light values So I'm looking at it again in the the three D view or the ortho view, sorry. And I'm seeing how it looks like and keep on fixing. Until I have perfect lips. So we'll do the same again on the nose. So if you remember guys what we did on the color on the nose, just to get the right scale also. So I'm gonna be painting the, por uh, the pores and the details of the nose skin, which is so much smaller than what we have right out of the projection. So I'm painting it back again, projecting it on it again. To get the small uh, scale of the pores. Yeah, so much better. And of course, lashes. And I will have to revisit this again because I can't have double lower lids. So I think I will have to fix it a little bit manually. A little bit of projection and painting. So first of all I just like get rid of the lashes and then I will start fixing it later. Same thing for the brows. So what I did, what I did with the uh, color map, I'm doing it again with the displacement, getting some information from the uh, from the forehead on the eyelashes area, on the eyebrows area. Sorry.
yeah that's better and do the same thing on the other side So now on the nose I'm selecting again the uh, mid gray color I'm painting the uh, nostrils with it so this way I don't have any displacement details in these areas <clears throat> I think I will get rid of this weird artifact also, yeah, on the rim of the nostrils. Yeah, so much cleaner. Do the same thing on the lids. Last thing you need is to have displacement details on the on something soft like the inner lids. And for anything that you're not sure of, just give it like a mid value and then you can add details to it in ZBrush and bake bake it with the displacement map that you're gonna bake from ZBrush. So yeah, as you can see guys, like now we have something clean that we can just project on our model either in Maya or in ZBrush and it will be working fine. So I think in the next video I will uh, start applying these maps in ZBrush. I will not bake my displacement maps from ZBrush this time. I will try to work in a better technical way, which is just applying these maps directly in Maya uh, like blending all my displacements uh, several displacement maps the one from Z, uh, ZBrush and the one the three ones that's like the secondary tertiary and micro all inside Maya so this way I have better displacement details uh, I will not just apply it in ZBrush and bake it that was a little bit uh, like I'm losing uh, some quality and some resolution doing that so I don't want to do that this time and that's why I will just apply it in ZBrush so I can continue working on my sculpt see the details and continue working on the likeness getting it to a better place so I think next week the video is going to be about uh, taking all these maps into ZBrush applying in layers so I can just Add them or remove them anytime I want. Have them while I'm sculpting more on the likeness. Break the symmetry from uh, uh, on on the model that I'm sculpting and try to get the likeness in an asymmetry uh, sculpting uh, manner and get the likeness more than what we have now. What we have now is basically more like a base mesh. I'm trying to add a little bit of chain details as you can see guys it's mostly like what I was doing in the color other than not caring about the ears and the uh, top of the head and the neck so yeah for the neck if you guys can see on my image manager now I have uh, neck back and neck front which is uh, another texturing XYZ maps that's just for neck and I would use it on another layer and it's gonna be also like a separate displacement that I'm gonna use only for the neck 
I, you you will see once I'm done with the face. So yeah, that's that's it. I'm adding another layer. I'm adding. So what what you get when you when you Porsche this uh, Nick uh, displacement maps from XYZ. You have it all in one map. What I did is that I split it into two. So I have uh, Nick front and Nick back. And then I will start adding. The problem is that there was no female. So it's only male. So what I will do is that I will work with the male ones. And then what I will do is that I will try to, as you can see, this is the uh, with with the three channels. So I will try to make the effect on my uh, secondary details, like the primary channel, the one that's that's uh, R. I will try to make it less, and this way you will not have these big bumps that makes it look like uh, a male neck. You will see once I start applying this in in ZBrush next week. You will understand what I what I mean by that. But yeah, so trying to get the front of the neck using these maps. And I think Mari crashed uh, crashed in this uh, in this moment. Um, and then I had to Yeah, I think so what happened is that uh, Mari crashed in this moment and then I had to just uh Open it again and then work with it. And I what I did is that I just continued doing that. So what I did on this side I made it on the other side and then of course the back of the neck I did the same thing. So as I told you guys next week uh I'm gonna start applying these maps, uh the displacement maps for the face and for the neck. I will start applying that to our sculpt in ZBrush on separate layers and I will start sculpting on another layer I'm trying to keep everything separate and in my sculpting I will not be sculpting in symmetry anymore and I will try to match the likeness and at the same time I will try to add displacements in areas that I still not feel happy about with what's happened was what I'm getting from my displacement maps so for example like on the lips I will try to add some more displacements on the ears for example uh, the neck all of these areas that I am not totally happy with the displacement I will add more details to it so hopefully next week we're gonna have this video which is gonna be like adding all of these maps into ZBrush containing our sculpt but basically what we're gonna end up with is the model from ZBrush with the displacement that's like bas like basic modeling in the ZBrush model and we're gonna have all our displacement maps coming from Mari, the one that we we painted today. And we're gonna try to use the method of applying all of these separate displacement maps to our shader and blend them together and play around with it until we are happy with the skin details. So that's it guys for this week. I hope you could uh, find it helpful how you can transfer your textures from the plane that that has the texturing XYZ textures into your model and bring it into Mari, paint on it, correct it, add more details. So that's it guys and see you next week.